from the Tai Lung versus the Vow. We're going to be getting into the first half of Winner Semis to see who gets themselves into that Winner's Finals. Meg D, first one to pick up a weapon, going to deny another one from Luna. Luna trying to play the unarmed, but he's just getting opened up as Meg D steals away the third weapon spawn from Luna. Yeah, Meg D playing super aggressive too. No, no remorse whatsoever. But now the gauntlets have come in. There's a reason why you need to keep Luna unarmed as long as possible because all that, all those wins you had before, lucky you got out of that one. But Luna instantly has taken the lead right back. Woo. Multiple recoveries from underneath, adding up damage after damage. Suddenly, Luna with the lead goes for the down sig, gonna get punished for it. Yeah, I like the attempt, you know, but Meg D also revealing the down sig early. So it's like, okay, let me go for it. And it, that, that's a fear tactic too, because if you could slow down Val from rushing you, that's a really good win condition that's gonna work for you later on. But Luna currently getting juggled a little bit, trying to find himself back down, and he does. Yeah, finds his landing, but he needs to find a way to finish the stock off of Meg D. The side air almost does it. One more hit, doesn't get the second side air. Yeah, just was out. Meg D just kind of hovering around the side there, maybe looking for a very early recovery there from Luna so he can capitalize. But now with the gauntlets, you got to watch out if you're jumping too much here. If you Luna, but does get the side air, and that's going to get the first stock. Yeah, Luna able to take the lead over Meg D, but can he get this extra credit? Scythe in hand, the weapon toss connects. Hey, now you gotta watch out for your landing right there. Luna already capitalizing big. Four, five, going all the way for more, but he gets away from it. Weapon toss down, actually, the turn is still Luna's. Yeah, he is keeping this one going, the weapon toss for pressure. Side sig, Megdi's just over it. That was about to be a beautiful stock from Luna, and he's not done yet. Tries to catch him oh, off stage. Oh, Unfortunately oh. for Luna, went a little bit too hard for it. But he was already so, like, deep in the red. At some point, he was probably gonna give it up anyways. Yeah, that's all right. He, he had the damage done, all right? He mm -hmm. can finish this one off in a second. Looking for more side airs. I did see the stars come out, so Meg D doesn't have the movement. And yeah, Luna immediately gets the stock advantage. Yeah, that was an opportunity that Meg D had to capitalize on after him giving up that stock. You needed to use that moment to get back in, and it didn't happen. Like, Luna is still keeping this going. Luna I, Luna is playing so impressive, but Meg D... The sword play has pretty much been what has got him to this point. And the gauntlets are getting a sh like shut down a bit, but if he can wake up with the sword, he's going to be feeling good. Well, he's got to find some sort of answer because it's definitely been the scythe of Luna. That's been the most impressive so mm -hmm. far. Neutralite doesn't get the read. All right, getting some jugglers going. You got to keep, you got to dodge. He keeps getting around, uh, he keeps getting around Luna's openings, but Luna just staying grounded. It's actually pretty smart at this point. It's like, look, why should I jump in front of you? You're trying to find a combo starter. I'm not going to give it to you. Ooh, tries to go for the offstage. Doesn't hit the down air. All right, Both good stall. Just misses out on the recovery, though. That's sh not, not enough. You're on Apocalypse. One more should definitely do it, though. Side air will do it. Yeah, finishes it off. Didn't take too much damage. This is definitely still doable for mm -hmm. Meg D. Luna was not able to get that extra credit. Yeah, extremely, extremely important point you just pointed out. The fact that the damage was... Very minimal on that last stock, so still very doable. Good whiff punish right there, and Meg D hovering around center, just waiting for another D-Light, and there's the D-Light, but he was already in the air, so he couldn't punish it. Yeah, Meg D doing a good job avoiding these hits from Luna. Luna has yet to hit Meg D on this final stock for a while now. Yeah, actually, you're right. Extremely elusive as Meg D all of a sudden. Luna was getting openings for free before. Meg D just continues to punish. Luna needs to get an opener, missing out again. Neutral Sig just raw connects onto Meg D as he's jumping over, though. Doubling up on it at that, too, trying to get a little unorthodox with him. Change things up to get confusing, but the weapon toss sending him back off stage. Meg D gets him with the D-Light recovery. Not enough just yet. Not going to quite finish off. Luna hits him with the side air. Doesn't even launch Meg D very far. Punishes the end Sig. Now, Luna can still very much take this game. He had such a good early lead, and that would be a, a mental destroyer, really, for, for Meg D after how amazing this last stock bin is if he does not close it out. Yo, he's playing it safe, sitting right on the corner. Weapon oh. toss. Luna's got horizontal movement. Yeah, he's got a couple. Oh, 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 oh no, around. he doesn't capitalize on it fully. Meg D's still going to get back to the wall, but that gives Luna an opportunity to get the edge guard. Meg D runs away. Luna chasing him down, just misses on the side air, sends him back off. Now it's Meg D with the horizontal movement, gets to the wall safely. Both of them deep red. Any hit could be it. He hits a neutral light, not quite enough. Weapon nah. toss and oh. Luna takes game number one. Yeah, pull out the blueprint at the end there because you need to figure something out. Luna was able to get that first game, but had to work very hard for it. This is, we, we, are, we are seeing so many situations where 
Luna, Luna did less damage than what he took, by the way. <laughs> like, it, like th these games are so close against the people we all just looked at to say they're winning the whole thing. Yeah. I know we keep pointing this out, but that's how insane everybody's playing today. That could have been Meg D's first game, and if I'm Meg D, don't let that bother you too much. It, w it was a bit rough at the start. But you got back into it at the end. You just couldn't close it out. Yeah, Meg D was really bringing that one back. And Luna kind of recognizes that. That's why he's opting to swap over to the core Ooh. for game number two. You can see that flat line on the graph while it's still up. That's where Meg D was not getting hit. He was just living. Yeah, that was incredible. Now here, switching things up to the core, getting access to the hammer that you definitely want to be able to uh, dodge away if you're Meg D. But one thing that you get access to with those gauntlets is the range of that side stick. Do not get too comfortable playing grounded because that's something that Meg D was doing for a while. I think Luna's switch up here, besides just getting some gauntlets out, is the pressure that that side stick can put on. And you're going to have to be very careful if you get caught slipping at the edge. Yeah, you get a lot of range on those gauntlet signatures. Who tries to chase dodge past Meg D? Definitely with some uh, some like player knowledge knew that he was gonna go for that. Yeah, you definitely you you should be studying the tapes right now. We were talking about it before with Snowy. You have to be studying the tapes against Luna, who has been just such a dominant force of late. Meg D definitely showing that he can do it, but he gets caught trying to jump in. Good anti air signature and Luna switches right back. The pressure keeps going, but it's still very even right now. Yeah, definitely not over for Meg D's first stock just yet. He's gotten some damage put out onto Luna, but another neutral sig and Luna takes the first stock. Weapon choice. What's he want? Yeah, Luna is showing that he's uh he is not at all being shy of using the signatures. I think we've seen about five already tossed out, two connecting. So that's not a bad percentage, Yo. but the ground pound will do yep. it. Okay, so that's gonna take out the stock. Good mitigation because it didn't get hit. Yeah, he cleaned that up real quick, found the Swiffer and everything, and now Luna has to find a weapon, has to find a way to get this one back in the lead. Yeah, especially with, it seems like Meg D has been playing better in the long game. And that's that's the most difficult part. But the sidelines are setting him some openings here. Trying to chase him down, trying to get the stop. But Meg D constantly jumping out of that. So Luna's going to be paying attention to that for the future after another sidelight. Oh, goes for the offstage. Meg D with the turnaround, hits a side air. Meg D has stage control, trying to catch some recovery, immediately dodging away from that, realizing it wasn't going to work. But Luna rushed him down as soon as he saw that recovery he spent. Nice. This time he picks up that downlight off of the side light. That actually was just high enough to avoid the unarmed punish. Like, Meg D was ready to get that, but now you have to watch. Yeah, get away from the hammer recovery. Do not try to challenge that unarmed. Oh. Didn't get the dodge, so he didn't go for the recovery. Neutral stick thrown out. No punish. Meg D misses, and Luna's going to hit him with the side air. Yeah, I think Meg D thought that he was going to touch the ground a little bit sooner than that. Going for the wall touch, but the hammer is going to snatch him up, send him straight to the blast zone at the bottom. Luckily for Meg D, we mentioned it just a little while ago that he's been playing good in the long game, but hopefully that still continues. I definitely want to see him get down to last stock. Yeah, his ability to clean up stocks has been very impressive as he's about to do it again onto Luna. Luna narrowly jumps over that, gets the wall touch, oh. Meg D. Okay, goes for the ground pound, trying to get, catch Meg D going towards the bottom of the stage. Did not give it to him, though. Weapon toss forced him to go high. Does Meg D, yeah, no reason to try to cover that with the Mammoth platform in the way. It's like, okay, let me just back off and go get stage control. Okay, he's going for the weapon toss to open up. Meg D with a great spot dodge ends up leading to a recovery and cleaned up. Yeah, Meggy's still taking very minimal damage after a stock. There's been no extra damage for Luna at all. Like, once the stock is gone, it's like, okay, I know we're going to wait about 30 seconds before I lose this stock, but just know that I don't appreciate you not let me get to hit. <laughs> like, come on. I got it. Let me get the like, extra look, credit. I have the lead. I unplugged your controller. Let me do this. But Meg D currently getting chased off stage. Luna trying to catch him with a mix-up with the side cancel, but does not get it. Luna had some pressure, but actually it's now turned to Meg D's turn. Yeah, it's looking good for Meg D as he hits another side air. Has complete stage control. Luna gets around, goes for the ground pound. Recovery connects. Luna trying to come in with the side air, but Meg D has, well, kind of had stage control there, but the unarm now. Trying to get him with the side air, just hovering around, just avoids the nair, but Luna has him with the stop stare. Now he's got to watch out for he the pressure beads, here. He sweat beads, he sweat toss down. Got him over the corner. Yeah, hit low, so he opts for the side light just for the damage. Both of them in the red, though. Oh, doesn't get high enough. Ensig, no punish. A little bit too far away to punish the Ensig, but he goes for it again. That time he's going to get the D-Light Sair. He's connecting on enough to get the damage, but he needs to get one more good hit. Luna playing as defensively as he possibly can. Recovery, still not enough. Oh, man. 
Luna playing around this. Another recovery. That defensive core. It's so hard to KO a rock. Down light. Nair, not oh. enough. Not enough, but he does the weapon toss up. Tries to force him to recover directly in front of him. Luna misses out as well. Weapon toss down. Tries to catch him on the rebound. And he gets rebounded himself. Meg D gets the second game and what was essentially a repeat episode of the first one. That really could have gone either direction. Luna was one hit away. Meg D found the one hit first, though. And now Luna going to think about what his next character is going to be. The damage difference very even between the two of them, 605 to 589. If this set was one of those that went 3-0, this is when I would say it was 3-0 and close. But luckily, Meg D was able to get one on the board. These are some of the most, these are some of the most endurance building stressful sets I have seen. And we're only two games in. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Uh, they're making my heart race, man. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm getting my cardio for the day just watching these matches. Uh, Meg D, no surprise to see, going to likely be sticking with the Val. But is mm -hmm. Luna going to change it up again? We already saw the Mordex. We already saw the core. Yeah, it's it's almost not even character pick at this point. Like it's been, it's dead even. Uh, I think it maybe had to do with a uh, stage pick. It's going to be the core again, so maybe we run it back to Mammoth Fortress, uh, opting for a flatter stage rather than trying to go to the platforms. I think if we went to platforms, we're probably going to head back towards the Mordex. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. But it is going to be that Mammoth Fortress, kind of like what you're saying, and uh, we'll see. I think the big thing for me is Luna. They had a lot of those hammer neutral suits. And they worked well in the first stock. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure they're going to continue to work out because Megdi starting to find more and more punishes on them. Yeah, first stock, I think he got, I, what did we say? I think it was like two for five, which is not a bad batting average. But after that, when you're when his duck's on the pot, you're just missing every single time. That gets frustrating. And the good thing, at least, that was kind of happening was the n weren't really getting punished by Meg D. So Meg D needs to play within a range, hopefully this time, to capitalize on those punishes. That's going to be free damage. Yeah, he's definitely moving around those, uh, those hammers for a while there. But here we go. Game number three. Luna already off stage. Sword in hand for Meg D. He's, he's going to just continue to look for these side airs. Meg D just playing so well at, at ledge control. He gets so much damage. And, and even after you get over the top, he's always in a position to catch a landing. And it, it's been working up. But Luna getting in now. This is an opportunity. Misses out on where he decides to land, though. He takes a recovery. And now he takes a side air. That's, the, I think, the third attempt we've seen at a signature period at the ledge that has not connected for Meg D. But at least that time is going to be the DLI recovery that gets him off the top. And he is just, he's playing his game now. It seems like his strat is going to just whittle away Luna. Luna, for the br for the brunt of that one, was just struggling to find landings. Yeah, th these two are taking, I feel like we're watching two people who are like trying really hard to find a way to have a conversation opener and they none of them want to budge. It's like, hey, 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 how you doing? <laughs> because they just, they take a little while to actually go in to get the, the conversation started. But when the damage does happen, it, it's almost worth it, it like you can't risk it because of how good they've both been playing but at least for luna gets the stock not too much damage here gets himself back in the game yeah commits to the hay with three y's and he finds that down sig <laughs> unfortunately Meg D keeps light. responding with k so <laughs> it's uh it's not been too good of a time for luna right now uh, luna actually well never mind luna actually waking up a little bit here so just missing out a couple nares and Meg D smacking away with side light and just getting stage position Okay, a little recovery from Meg D. Again, they're just kind of trading blow for blow. Is vying for stage control. Most of them want to hold center stage as much as possible, but really, the biggest game right now is just who wins first. He who shoots first is going to lose. And, it, and this time, it was Meg D. Luckily, dodging that, though, that could have that could have spelled that stock away immediately. That was a beautiful spot dodge inside the side sig from uh, Luna. And then Meg D. Comes in, down light recovery. Meg D about to go up 2-1 over Luna. This is, this could have been a 2-0 lead. We got to continue to point that out. This could have easily been Meg D up two games right now, but Luna was able to stop it. And Meg D hasn't slowed down. Meg D continues to perform well, and his defense has been on point. But there's that gauntlet side sig. I was waiting for a while to see. And with that platform feeling like you were comfortable to not have to worry about anything, snatch him up, send the packing. Catch the landing. Well done from Luna. Final stocks here, relatively even. And I mean, what more could you ask for, right? We expected this with how the stats go. They're even in game count and set count. 
Yeah, they, this is it, oh, actually true. That's another thing you pointed up uh, at the very beginning, and now I see why. It's 15 games to 16 games with l only one game in favor of Meg D. This is as even of a skill set between these two as possible. Right now it's on Meg D to try and show if he could keep that. Go up two games, lifetime on Luna. If he keep, keep this going, gets the anti-air Nair. Pushing, kind of walking Luna over towards the corner. It's actually working out. Yo, but a good Nair from Luna helps secure the landing. Neutral light from Meg D. Again, the wall of hitboxes from Meg D. Meg D looking for an answer on the side. He's been able to connect consistently with as many D-lights as he feels like, but he gets reversal sidered. He did, and then Luna decides to commit off stage, and now, he, now he's back up against the wall. Yo, the Nair. The damage is being done onto Luna. He's got to be careful here. Does not have Meg D in KO percent just yet. He's slowly working his way in. Meg D cannot get overly ambitious. That's the biggest thing, that when you have a lead like this, you do not want to start to get kind of KO happy because that makes it obvious and it gives a free punish for Luna to capitalize on. No recovery doesn't oh. get the dare. Recovery from Meg D. And he goes up 2-1. We are about to get upset. That just missed. That was so close to Luna snatching that. And with it, I got to take a look back at where the damage was because that was possibly very close to getting a KO on uh, on the Meg D. Let's take a look. Uh, it's okay. Never mind. Luna, Meg D wasn't there yet, but that would have put Meg D in disadvantage where he could have possibly caught a Nair on the way down. But extremely important fact you just said again, two games up to one in what has been the most chaotic tournament. Let's make this clear. If Luna goes down here, seed one, seed two, and I believe seed three as well is already down there. <laughs> I mean, you, you can, I'm pretty sure the top eight seeds are in elimination bracket. <laughs> like, it's there have been so many people that were not expected to be here getting upsets, and now we'll see if Meg D can be another one to continue the upsets against Luna as Luna goes to the tried and true, the Roman Reigns. And one of the most tried and true positions we've seen Luna wake up is the Roman Reigns here on Apocalypse, going to the end of days, trying to end this bracket run on the winner's side for Meg D if he can get some answers. And I'm kind of surprised that it took a little bit to get to this point. It definitely is something that Luna has been moving away from, right? We've seen him kind of lean into the Mordex a little more, mm -hmm. maybe even, of course, we saw the core for a little bit, but when it comes, push, to, push comes to shove, that's when it seems like he brings out the Roman Reigns. Yeah, it really has. It, it, I, I, the Mordex, it's not like the Mordex has been bad. The Mordex has been cooking people left and right. If, if, but the uh, the Taros has what got, has been what gets you a lot of these dubs. The Roman Reigns being out here to get that work done. Can he find the ground pound? Yes, he does. And that's first stock going to Luna. Really good positioning for that one. Played the outside as Meg D went for the wall and he got that down like ground pound. Needs to get some extra credit here. Meg D's been so good at cleaning up stocks. Exactly. This is actually one of the few times that we've seen Luna actually get some reward for getting the getting the stock because most of the time, like you said, Meg D barely ever gets hit and he's already made a trip to orange. He has stage position at least. That's going to be a ground pound. Shuts it down, but he was actually getting hit quite a bit. Definitely surprised Meg D went over there for the unarmed challenge against the hammer, especially because Luna still had the recovery, but mm -hmm. Luna maybe didn't expect Meg D to come over there. Yeah, that's a, I mean, you got to change your pace. You got to change it up, and it's definitely been working well. Tries to go for the ground pound, but does not get him. However, the juggle continues here for Luna. Now has access to the hammer, just missing out on the GC stop because Meg D a little too far away. Good movement from Meg D getting past that Nair, but Luna knows a scoop up, a down light side air, any of it could finish a stock, and it's the scoop. All right, so the life is coming back into Luna here, not trying to go down already, trying to get himself back into this move to Soul Game 5. Meg D, Meg D's passive play has been working out very well against a lot of the approaches from Luna, but now he's kind of getting rushed down, and he hasn't been able to respond yet. Yeah, Luna's definitely finding more than just one or two hits the way that he was with the core. He's finding a lot of momentum. Good Nair from Meg D keeps himself alive. That ground pound could have been fatal. Yeah, now Meg D, who's been so consistent at finding these recoveries consistently off the D-Light recoveries and such, has it? I don't think he's got a single sick KO at all yet, so he's still trying to find Ooh. that. That could have been the end of the game right there with the GC neutral stick, but Luna is going to smack him away. That should give him the game here with the weapon toss down. Absolutely, and we are not done yet. We're going to go to a game number five. Luna making sure that this one goes down to the wire, forcing it to game five with the Roman Reigns, and Luna... I mean, he's looking really good, but this gives Meg D the opportunity not only to pick a map of choice, but he also gets a counterpick character. Yeah, after what we've seen, it's, go it's still going to be the Val. The Val has been working so well for Meg D. But like you said, counterpick a choice on the stage. You have to pick correctly here. For one, I don't think you go back to Apocalypse. Uh, 
I don't know if you're going to be able to go back to uh, it, like small famous fortress has worked for you very well so far but is it going to work again this time? It seems like we're start. It's kind of alluding to it. No, okay. instead it's going to be Brawl Haven. We're we are throwing hands out here. Yeah, Luna wants to finish this one quick. Small map, uh, quick KOs. Lots of potential here for people to be sent flying very quickly. Yeah, that's only going to be beneficial for Luna after what we saw in that last one. The most important thing was after he actually got a stock, he got more damage. Meg D was never allowing that to happen. Looks like the Endurance might be showing some cracks in the defense, maybe. We'll see. It is still game five. Anybody could go down here. Yeah, potential here for Meg D to get the upset. Potential here for Luna to continue on and guarantee a top three finish. And Meg D trying to continue the storyline of everybody who is high seed. Like you said, everybody in top eight down there except one, the seed number one, who's trying to keep himself in that position right now, trying to find an opening with the side lights, realizing it wasn't really a good spot, so kind of retreating, maybe trying to scoop Meg D, who keeps trying to challenge him off stage on the hammer recoveries. Meg D not actually budging that time. And Meg D's been doing a really good job of sitting right on the corner. Gets a down light recovery. Another one of those could be bad for Luna. Throws away the hammer, trying to secure a landing. Axe pickup. Hey, here, Ball Haven. These stocks are going to fly, but that one's not going to be enough at the top yet. However, you are not taking another one of those. Uh, Meg D just waiting for a mistake from Luna. Luna gets an opener, though. Whoa! Oh, the fake out, the weapon was still active. The down sick connects, and Luna gets the first stock. Oh, what a mix up there from Luna. Weapon toss up, forcing Meg D to take the hit, and then immediately getting scared of the follow up, closing it out. Luna now needs to do exactly what he did last game. Keep racking on that damage. Go after hours, get that extra credit because you need it to secure this victory. Meg D gets the recovery, not enough extra credit. And now it's Meg D's time to clock in for overtime. He's got to get back to what was working for him in the first 40 hours of this set. If he does not figure out what allowed him to get the success last time in every game, the first game could have been his too. You have to find that success again here to get back. What? Luna with the axe in hand, Meg D with the sword, the damage relatively even between the two of them. Ooh, catching him out of the recovery oh. right there, but Meg D actually gets advantage control because uh, Luna went a little bit too far for that. Now unarmed, this is an opportunity for Meg D here to capitalize on him with the gauntlets and keeps the weapon star going. Yeah, weapon spawns working out very well for Meg D. Luna finds one though. Meg D getting some damage added up. And Meg D just kind of staying back here, waiting for that punish opportunity. There it is, not jumping in front of Luna. Luna getting sick, happy, trying to catch him with the end sick to send him off stage. And oh. he, you know what? Three, three, four, just keep doing it. And it's going to work out. The first two were baits, we'll call them. The third one was the actual answer, and he gets the lead. He foreshadowed his option. He kept saying, I'm going to end sick. I'm going to do it. Just watch and, what, <laughs> and he did it's one of those moments like there's no way no way he's gonna do it again and luna might do it again where he gets himself Detective. oh 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 meg d just missing out on the ground pound trying to get a punish but he capitalized on him on the side meg d gets access to the sword but misses out recovery we'll get it to last stock he cleans up the stock last stock each of them luna no weapon spawns Luna trying to hover around, and he gets access to the weapon. Tyler like coming through, trying to go for the big play there, but misses out. And Meg D doing a, a, a solid job of kind of hovering around him. He's slowly racking up this damage here, Duke. Yeah, Meg D is definitely not done yet. Luna might have that health advantage, but he's not finding many hits on these final stocks. Yeah, Luna going, like, kind of revealing again. It's like, look, I'm going for signature happy plays, but maybe that in itself is a conditioning tool now here on last stock. But no, he goes for another one. That could have been it. Meg D trying to find the opportunity to close some th close the gap as much as possible. He hits the neutral light, puts Meg D off stage. Going to swap over to the hammer. Stomp nothing from Ooh. Luna. The delayed nair and Luna secures his spot in the winner's finals. Beautifully executed on that last play. Going for the stop, realized he didn't have to follow up, so as soon as he free fell down, he didn't instantly try to chase him again. He hovered around, waited for the uh, the jump to come out, and then pushed, because at that point, your resources are dropping too low. That play was so immaculate because he, once again, it was the, you don't think I'll do it again, covering him with the side air, and then here on the last stock. Catch him with that, waiting for the dodge. You have no more defensive resources, covering him instantly with the Nair as soon as he saw that reacted perfectly and Luna the only one holding on to that winner's side of this bracket but that one again so close final stocks four damage difference 484 to 488 that mm -hmm. one 
was a nail biter. Luna barely manages to continue on over Meg D. Game number one, six damage difference. Game number five, four. That's how close it stayed the whole time.